Hello and welcome. So I found the video from this guy here. I can only speak positive about him despite the fact he's using catchy thumbnails to desperately get views from time to time. I thought it would be interesting to make a newer and better version of this video. So for some reason this video recently got some traction and I actually checked out what I did here two years ago. I will challenge my own code, provide a better solution and yeah let's see if I can write even better code than I did two years back. So the strategy was as written here. General condition, stock is above its 200 day moving average. Buy if 10 period RSI is below 30 and buy on the next day is open. Sell if 10 period RSI is above 40 or after 10 trading days. Sell on the next day is open. As a note for this video I'm just setting it up for a single stock but I'm open to also do that on a large scale again. Just like the video, leave a comment, share with everyone you know and we can do that. So let's jump to the coding part and see how I solved it back then. So I'm skipping the RSI calculation part as I'm just using a library for calculating the RSI in this video. What I see here is this horrible assignment of the buying condition. This is very badly written because you can simply work with booleans here. If that condition, so close is above moving average and RSI is below 30, just set a true value and else a false value. No need to assign the opposite as I did here and also no need for assigning string values as I did here as well. Now let's consider the loop. So the base logic here is I'm looping over all rows in the data frame. And if I have my buying condition fulfilled, I want to append the next rows date to my buying dates list. Reason behind that is simply I'm buying on the next days open. When I bought, I trigger an inner loop, which is iterating over the subsequent rows from the buying row on and then checks the RSI. When the condition is met, it is appending the next rows date and breaks the inner loop. Otherwise, if the condition wasn't met in these 10 subsequent rows, I'm selling after 10 trading days. This whole logic does the job, so it's all right, but it is written very poorly. It contains an unnecessary nested logic and this video we will distinctly improve this code, making it more readable and more efficient as well. All right, let's get started. We need some libraries. While finance supports stock price data, pandas for data handling and TA to calculate the RSI conveniently. Next, we are going to pull stock price data for Apple and we are starting in the beginning of 2015. Ending up with the data frame containing open, high, low, close data on a daily base. And the first thing we are going to do is to calculate the simple moving average over 200 days. Appending a column to that data frame, just calling it SMA for simple moving average, take the close column, roll over it with a 200 time step window and take the mean. Moving average calculated as you see here. Next, we are doing the same for the RSI using the TA library access the momentum functions and then the RSI, take the close and define the window as the 10 period RSI. RSI calculated, done. Next, we are going to create a new column here, which is our price column. And our price is always the next days open. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply shifting the open column one row back. With that, I always get the buy price in the same row as the signals are occurring. So I'm just going to call that price and take the open and shift that one row back. So this is looking like this. So for instance, here you have the price and this is simply this one here. So just the next days open. All right, in every single row, this is this and so on, you got the point. Next, defining our buying condition. 
So I'm just uh, creating a new column here. And here I'm simply screening is the close above my simple moving average and is my RSI below 30. As simple as that. So I'm getting a false value if this is not the case and I'm getting a true value if that is the case. Let's actually take a look at uh, those where we have true values. So for instance, here you see on the ninth year, you see that the close is above the simple moving average and the RSI is below 30. So we have a, a true value here for the buy signal. Okay, same story for selling or the sell signal. Just taking the RSI is above 40. And now we are doing the back test and I'm taking an iterative approach again. You can also solve that vectorized for this video. To keep it simple, I'm staying with an iterative approach. So we need a position flag, which is initially false. So this is simply keeping track of if we are in a position or not. Then I'm creating two empty lists here, buys and sells. And here I'm storing the buy and sell prices. You can also uh, work with um, dates or additionally add dates lists here for the backtest. It is not really necessary at this point, but if you are interested or if you want to know when you actually bought, then you can uh, take those lists as well. I'll show you in some seconds or minutes how you would implement the dates as well. But for now, I'm working with the buy and sell prices. And now I'm looping over the a data frame. So for index row in df iterose and the index is my or are my dates and the row is simply a row. So open, high, low, close, just close volume, SMA, RSI, price, buy and sell. So I want to know if I'm not in a position, if not in position, which is initially the case, then I want to check if row buy. So if I have a true value in my uh, buy column here. So as said, this is iteratively and it's looping over every single row. So this is working like this. It is looping, checks this row first and then it's going over row buy and seeing false. So condition is not fulfilled, right? Then next row, row buy false next row and so on until you are getting a true value here. This is how the iteration is work working here. So if I'm getting a true value here in the buy column, I'm just taking my buys list and append the price because the price is already the next days open. Once that is the case, I'm setting my position flag to true. And now I'm working with a counter approach to keep track of the uh, 10 days in the selling conditions, right? So the selling conditions condition was uh, my RSI value is above 40 or sell after 10 trading days if that is not happening, right? So I'm working with the uh, counting approach here. So when I'm, I bu when I'm buying, I'm setting a counter. So our count is for row count uh, to zero. Okay. And you might already guess that this is increasing by or incrementing rather by one every single iteration from there on. And if I'm larger than 10 or larger or equal to 10, then I'm selling if my RSI condition wasn't fulfilled. That's the logic here. So I'm checking if I'm in a position, my row count should increment by one in each iteration, right? So because I'm looping row by row, and with that, in each iteration, the counter is increasing by one. So I'm keeping track of the subsequent rows and can say, okay, if that is larger or equal to 10, then I want to sell. So this is my row count. But before that, I want to check if my selling condition is fulfilled. So I'm checking in every single row, if row sell, so the selling condition, our size above 40. Then I want to append to my sales list and I want to append the price again because I'm selling on the next days open. 
And if that's the case, I'm out of the position. And now, very important, else if, so else if that is not happening, when that is not happening, and my row counter is larger or equal to 10, or also equal to 10 you can take here, then I wanna append row price here, right? Because what is happening after 10 rows, the condition wasn't fulfilled, otherwise that block here would have been executed. Then I wanna sell after 10 rows here or after 10 trading days. And I also wanna sell on the next days open. This is why I'm taking the row price here. And then I'm setting my in position flag also to false here, okay? So if I run this, that's already it for the, for the back test, right? So I have a list buys where I have my buy prices and I have my sell prices here, right? Now, let me quickly, before taking a look at the profits and stuff like that, let me quickly show you how you can also add the buying and selling dates here. So um, you could just work with buy dates, sell dates here, and then just add the index. So buy dates, append, and then the index here, right? So this is what you can also do to keep track of the dates. But I'm doing that not for now because I'm just interested in how the strategy is uh, performing overall for detailed um, tractions. This is something for future videos, not for now. But if you wanna make this construct here, um, yeah, kind of, more informative, you can just add something like uh, print sold because of RSI and then or print sold after 10 days, right? Then you see what's actually going on. So if I'm executing that again, you see first buy is sold by RSI, second buy is sold after 10 days and so on, right? So you can, of course, extend this with some prints here, or for instance, print an index here, and then something like bought at, and then you have the buying dates here in the loop as well, if you wanna have that, right? But I have all my information in the list here, so I don't need it for now. This is the uh, core loop. So. Let's get to analyzing the trades. So I have two lists here, so I'm going to create a data frame of those two lists, uh, passing buys and sells. And then I'm setting my index to buys and sells here, getting my trades like this. So I wanna have it transposed, right? So I have buys and sells here as columns. So setting trades like this. And now I can calculate my PL. So my PL is simply, so I'm just add, appending a column here to this data frame. PL is simply my sales or my sell prices minus my buy prices, right? And so you can calculate the, the PL in, in numbers, doing it here. And you have it in numbers. I'm doing it in relative terms, so I'm setting that into relation to my buy price. So this is my relative PL. You can just uh, divide that by the buys, and then I have it conveniently as a relative PL. And now you can do your analysis. So for instance, um, the the initial claim was, "Wow, this has such a high winning rate," right? So you could just check this PL column for numbers which are positive here, right? So just to give you an idea, you can check trades PL larger zero. Then you're getting three false values here. So if you have the true values, you're getting only the positive ones. Then you can take a look at the shape of this. So you have nine um, 
nine positive trades, then set that into relation to all trades, which are uh, 12 here, right? So just take trades shape. So with that, you have your winning rate of 75%, uh, all right? Now let's take a look at the uh, profit you would make with this strategy. So I'm just accumulating the returns over the PL column. So I'm just taking PL here plus one and take the cumulative product. In case you don't know how returns are accumulated, I will link a video in the video description explaining how this is working. This is basically simply uh, accumulating those returns here, right? So this is the overall profit you would have made with this strategy starting in the beginning of 2015. So 25% plus here, right? So yeah, the main criticism on this strategy, not only from my side, also from people who were commenting on this video, you were 100% right, of course, right? There are some problems with this strategy. So as you see, you have 12 trades, but you're considering a time horizon since 2015. That's not, that's simply not enough trades here, right? And what I did in the other video was considering a lot of stocks, right? And with that, tackle the problem that you're generating too few trades here, right? By just considering more stocks and then with that, hopefully generating more signals, right? And with that, generating more trades and make more money with this strategy in the end or make more profits with this strategy. But this is something for, uh, for a follow-up video. So if you're interested in that, let me know. For now, let's check some other assets here. So Tesla, just execute everything again. So would have made 70% uh, profit with this strategy, but here you see only eight trades. So yeah, let's take a, another one, maybe not that high correlated one, tra traditional one, Caterpillar, only six trades and only a very small profit here. Right, so yeah, that's these are some examples, but I actually would be interested to do the follow-up video on including a lot of stocks here and then do the following. So extend my previous video by also taking a look at only going into the, the position when you're not in a position with another stock, right? So as an example, if you, trade on let's say January 2020 and you are staying in the position until the 5th January, then you don't wanna buy another stock which has a signal in that time horizon, right? And then just check if you can generate more trades with this strategy. I think that's quite interesting. And yeah, so if you're interested in that, let me know. And I thank you very much for watching. I hope this was interesting, entertaining and yeah. Looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.